Are you impatient? Do you want what you want, when you want it, and when you want it is right now? Well, you're in luck because today's episode, we were talking about the benefits of waiting. Wait a second. There's benefits to waiting? Holy None. freaking cow. <laughs> and we're not just talking about losing your V-card. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Randy. That's Danny. What's going on, Danny? What's up, Randy? Yeah. Quite an intro, huh? I know. It's good. I am tired. I was waiting. <laughs> the... Uh... <laughs> I think probably most people think there's no benefits to waiting now. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, well, if you can have it faster, why would you want to wait? Well, it's hard. I know it is hard too because I think like we have been so conditioned to getting things now. Like you know, it's funny. I laugh all the time now because like all these companies have come like come into existence. I feel like in the last like I don't know five or ten years that you can you can buy stuff now with like those payment plans. No, mm-hmm. and there's I forget the names of them, but there's a ton. Anywhere you go shopping, yeah. you'll see it. Like it's like four easy payments. Uh, yeah, you can have everything now. You can yeah. scratch your itch now, and then you just for it for the rest of your life. And I get it, right? Because like that's exactly it, right? When people are shopping, most of the time it's like you're scratching that itch, so they want it, they want you to buy it now. Because if you wait, you're probably gonna like talk yourself out of it because you don't need it. But it's yeah. funny that like that kind of stuff though, I think really does screw up our ability to like wait for things we get frustrated like and you know with packages like if something doesn't come in the mail like when you expect it to you get people get pissed because it's like where is it well, dude, it used on? to take a couple of weeks to ship stuff now you order on amazon you get it later that day you remember what ordering you this is dating myself but that's remember what i was ordering gonna say back yeah. of a magazine and it would be like dude like six months <laughs> like, yeah it would be it. like allow four to six weeks for processing we have to make and... it yeah <laughs> Literally. exactly yeah everything but there's there's something to be said for for waiting and this is actually uh from a little bit of personal experience that the topic for this came up so a while back i read this book called essentialism which is like the premise that you can do anything but you just can't do everything and only a few things matter and so oh, I you were the philosophical. Never mind. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah yeah so ever since then you know i have like my list of the things that are most important to me and then i have like a cue list so like a uh up next list so like stuff that's on there is stuff that i want to do but i just don't have enough time resources brain power whatever it is to do it now and so what's really interesting is probably like a month ago i started doing something that was on my to-do list like it it had been on my to-do list for like months maybe even years at this point and i'd always been looking at it but i just never had the time never had the energy whatever it was and so i started doing it about a month ago and it's the most rewarding thing i have done in so long and it's just it's just crazy because i'm like you know had i have i'm thinking i'm like man if i would have just done this like years ago when i wanted to imagine how much better it would be but then i'm thinking you know maybe part of how good it is is just because i had to wait for so long and i saw it there all the time and other stuff came and gone from that like waiting list but this one stayed there and then now i made the time for it no i think it does though it does increase its value because dude like i mean i told you this you remember when i got that one lens i really wanted and i had wanted that lens for like a decade literally mm-hmm. like you know since i first like before well yeah way long ago and but it you know it's expensive they are they're not cheap so you know i mm-hmm. couldn't at the time like i could have probably gotten it like back then i could have used credit or something but then i would have been paying it off and it would end up spending way more and like waiting like i was able to buy it outright it was awesome and like it's been the best and like i think there is something to that it's hard to do though because you have to like you know constantly remind yourself and like you know wait and hold back but at the same time it's like i think also like when you wait too you also have time to actually enjoy the things that you're getting Mm -hmm. because like you know you're getting it at a time when like okay i can use it now and you get to enjoy it too because that's the other side like i know there's so much crap like we buy that like we don't even use because we don't even have time to use it. Like, it's like an idea we have. Like, people want to start a hobby or something. So they'll go get stuff because it's fun to buy stuff. And then they don't ever start because they don't really have time in their schedule to do that thing, you know? And it's yeah, like... It's easy to buy the stuff. It's hard to actually oh, yeah. use it. Yeah. And then you have to have a bunch of junk. But I think it is. It's really hard, though. Like, it is hard waiting at first. And I do the same thing as you do. I keep, like... I have so many, like, lists of things I want to do or whatever. And it's cool because on the one hand, I think... By writing stuff down, we I do find like it gets done eventually, and a lot of times before I even think it's going to get done, it gets done. But I like that idea too. What you were mentioning of like of prioritizing like 
your most important things because i've been kind of doing that too and like a sort of week by week method i guess but prioritizing like the most important things you want to do and then everything else is like bonus and but it can also you also realize that that stuff can wait and be pushed aside it's okay and it takes that stress off because i think when you don't do that you're like running around like a chicken with its head cut off right like you feel like you have so much to do you can't get everything done and then everything just gets worse and harder to do yeah Mm -hmm. yeah yeah like there's only a few things that you can actually do and really make any measurable difference in and so by having that list there it's allowed me to kind of like almost do the things that i want to do like i know that i'm going to do it when i have the time (laughs) and resources available to do it but it's just right now i'm full i can't do anymore no and i think you made a good point too about resources because when you don't have the resources you can't do it right either And I think that's like the other thing we screw up so much is like, that's why people start things that they want to do so much and quit. And I've done this in the past too, because like you really want to do something. So you start, but it's like totally not the right time. You have way too much other stuff you haven't prioritized. Right. And so you can't commit to it like you should. Cause like, you know, we talk about this all the time. Like anything like worth getting good at is going to take time. It takes a lot of effort. And like, if you really are passionate about something, really want to do well at something, you're going to have to put a lot of hours in and, You have to kind of have that time scheduled out for yourself. So I think waiting in that case, too, can be really beneficial to like the right moment. But what if there is no perfect moment? This is the other side that I think you hear people say a lot, like there's never a right time. And I do also think that's also true to some extent with stuff. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you just do have to pull the trigger. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's certain things. There's never a right time. But yeah, I don't know. Um, There was another... There was another thing that I was thinking of in terms of this with like, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah. Learning patience. Oh, yeah. So, so like patience is the hardest thing because I, I mean, I've just trained, I guess we're all trained to just be impatient. Like we're rewarded for being impatient. And so in life all the time, I'm like, well, I have to walk faster than people and drive faster than people and, you know, get to the shortest line every store and, you know be the first one in the first one out and all this different stuff. And it's like all these signs of being impatient. And there was this, the book, the, the ruthless elimination of hurry. And he was talking about how it, it can actually be a practice and a good practice to intentionally, like when you go to the supermarket, get in the longest line possible. And like when you're driving down the highway. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, I know. Right. And when you're driving down the highway, drive in the slow lane. And it's like these things help build up patience because the only way that you get it is through training. Well, you know, what's funny, too. I always found that funny with driving because, like, you'll rush to get somewhere. But, like, really at most, like, what are you shaving off? Like, maybe a, minute, a couple minutes. minutes. Yeah, Like, <laughs> most of our drives. Like, granted, like, a long trip. Like, if you're going, like, a 10-hour trip, you might be able to shave off, like, 30 minutes or something if, you, if you're driving a little quick. But, but even still, that, for a day yeah. for a day trip, you're saving... <laughs> 30 minutes. What are you going to do in that 30 minutes? And, so and it's funny. And it's like, but in, to do that, to, sh- to like save that minute or that 30 minutes, you're also like amping up your adrenaline, your stress, you know, your anxiety. Endangering it's all, people's lives. <laughs> yeah, it's all going through the roof. Like, it's really funny when you step back and kind of think about this stuff. And I think I like that idea too, of like going along the lines and stuff and just trying to force yourself to kind of realize that it doesn't matter. It'll get done, you know? And I think, yeah. but we are, we're so conditioned on the dopamine pit and that immediacy of everything. And I do, I do think like a lot of that has been technology, like, because it changed so much of our society. I mean, we saw literally lived through it. Like you saw, like, you know, I remember that was like kind of the time too, when stores started to stay open 24 hours, like not just like gas stations, but like everything. And like, you know, Mm -hmm. everything was open seven days a week and like everything had to be now and ready and available because, you know, or like back in the day of dial up modems where like you turn it on and it would take five minutes to load or whatever. (laughs) And those get crazy. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And then it would have this like slow site that would kind of come down like a little bit at a time. You'd be like, come on, come on. But nowadays, if the page doesn't load instantaneously, you're just hit, clicking the back button button or going somewhere else. Remember if like pages had an image, dude, it would take like five minutes. (laughs) forever you get yeah. like the title and then be like, yeah. oh god <laughs> but yeah it was funny you know i remember i'll never get the one of my buddies is like one of the first kids i knew that got his family had a computer with like the internet this is like well i don't know i was in probably like kind of sixth grade or so but 
went to his house and he's like, dude, check this out. It's awesome. You can chat with any with anybody. It was like a you know, one of those chat group things that like, you know, yeah. it was like basically text messaging with other people, random people. And he's like, check this out. So he's like, he says like something like, hello, what's up, whatever. And like five minutes or 10 minutes later, like a response goes back. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and yeah. he was sitting there all day. So like he had a, you know, like had only communicated with maybe like four people, a couple of conversations. Just yeah. Fast, and, fast forward 30 years. Now you can have an instantaneous conversation with a pedophile trying to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> trying to uh-huh. bait you. Yeah, yeah. It is weird though, but I think we have lost that. And I, I wonder too, because I it's funny, I was just thinking about this last night. It's kind of funny, you just remind me of by bring this topic up. But I was watching this show and it was like taking place in like I think it was like, you know, sometime around like probably like the eighteen hundreds. And it was during a war and stuff, but like, you know, they kept showing this one character, like he was like doing, you know, going on a journey, but he kept sitting, like kept doing meditation and stuff. And I was like, I wonder if people did that more back then, because like they didn't have all these other distractions. Like there wasn't like I mean, you couldn't even get books that easily. So like, Dude, I remember rainy days when I was a kid was like the worst torture ever because yeah. there was just nothing to do. Like, especially if you like at my house, I had like Nintendo or whatever. But yeah. like if I was going somewhere else and it was a rainy day, it was just torture because you're just sitting inside. Like, what is there to do? I've done everything already. Yeah. And I always wondered if that like if we were like naturally more like um more patient back then or more like, you know, just able to like be bored because i think that's like that's what it is we cannot we are incapable of being bored anymore well also i just finished this book called the open focus brain and it was kind of talking about that type of thing how there are multiple types of focus so like right now in this day and age we're very good at this sharp focus where we can focus on stuff like you know computer screens and problems and figuring out everything Mostly but it causes screens. a lot of issues yeah it causes <laughs> a lot of issues because we can never really relax yeah. and so the whole book was talking about this open focus where like you're able to just take more things in and that was probably what people did back in the day because you just sit outside and you're just like let it all come in you can reflect on other stuff you can like reflect on your past you can reflect on your decisions you have time to do that and i noticed that now like because we've been talking about this a lot but i've been like i've been working on the schedule because like i felt like i was like just it was too intense and like you know and i noticed when it gets that way too like you you can't relax you're just stressed all the time because you never feel like you're getting enough done. You never feel like you're like, and so it's like every day it feels like you're starting like behind almost, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And like, yeah. and I think that's like such an unhealthy way to live too. Cause you're just stressed <laughs> constantly. And uh-huh. you know, it doesn't make it, you don't enjoy the things that you are doing and you don't do them well either. Cause you're not giving yourself time to do them. So it's like horrible. And I think mm-hmm. it does, but it does take, I think in, in our society now, it takes conscious effort to actually do these things because the like kind of i guess like go to is just intense focus and like rushing yeah and it's like the concept that everything that we're doing makes such a big difference but then in <laughs> yeah, the right. end it doesn't yeah because we're <laughs> rushing it, to get all this stuff done and it it it's, yeah like all the most it's crazy like all of the most important projects of our lives are probably just going to be pushed aside once we die and somebody else would be like man not a big deal yeah they won't even matter Life goes on yeah. Other stuff will be made. Other stuff will be created that's going to outshine it for sure. Mm-hmm. Like always going to happen, you know. I mean, it's mm-hmm. rare that there's stuff that persists. You know, I mean, even if you look, at, look at like ancient history, right? How many like books? How many works really survived? Probably like you know mm-hmm. the smallest percentage of what existed. Most of mm-hmm. the people that were probably up there with the people that we celebrate as great, you know, from back then, they probably their mm-hmm. works probably never been found. Probably doesn't exist, and they're unknown. You know, so it's like you think of it that yeah. way. It's like, yeah, I mean, and also who cares? And it, may, and it, may, don't know. it may not even be the best stuff, you know, yeah. it could have just been the stuff that survived or could have been the, the trend of the time. Like, you know, you look at nowadays. Sure, there's a lot of great uh, stuff coming out. But like if you look at the trends, it's yeah. not exactly always the best stuff. And what if that's all that carries on and not the actually important yeah. things? I mean, that's the interesting thing. Right. And like. And it's funny, too, because, like, you have no control over that stuff either, like legacy or anything. So it's like there's no sense worrying about it. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need to, We need more patience and we need more uh, slowing down, I think. Yeah, so there you have it. That's nice and simple, the benefits of waiting. It's an interesting practice because everything is so fast-paced in the world nowadays and you get everything immediately. 
that like waiting seems like such an inconvenience and imposition. <laughs> How dare you make me wait for my meal like, but it's funny because it is it's it's funny how hard it is to do mm -hmm. like you know yeah. yeah but yeah cool well that's all for this episode if you enjoyed it we got episodes coming out all the time on youtube or also wherever you get your favorite podcast this is the existential stoic podcast i'm randy that's danny i'll see you later danny later randy